In this video, we're going to look at these three topics, joint random variables, joint distribution functions, and marginal distribution functions. We've been looking at random variables uh, one at a time. However, let's take a look at what happens when we look at two random variables at the same time. As an example, suppose we want to, we want to investigate, uh, let's say, temperature and humidity at a particular location. We know that there's going to be some relationship between temperature and humidity and we want to know what that relationship is in a probabilistic manner. Also, suppose we want to have a um, student, we want to look at students ACT scores and GPA scores. There's going to be some correlation there between them and, and we want to investigate what that is. Or as another example, suppose we want to know what the relationship is between a person's height and weight. We know that there's going to be some relationship there, uh, but we don't know exactly what it is. We want to be able to investigate that. So joint distribution functions will tell us what that relationship is between two random variables, or more, but we'll just look at two random variables. So a joint probability distribution function, we're going to define for discrete random variables. And remember, for discrete random variables, uh, let's suppose we have x and y, uh, they'll take on discrete values and let's say the range for x goes from x1, x2 through xn and y goes y1, y2 through y sub m. The joint probability distribution function is a function h. The reference we're using uses the function h to represent the joint distribution function and it's a function of our x and y values. So it's a two-dimensional function x sub i and y sub j. This function is defined as the probability, at least for discrete random variables, it's defined as the probability that x will be equal to that x sub i value and y will be equal to that y sub j value. Since we're dealing with prob uh, probabilities, we know that this distribution function will have these, prob uh, these properties. First off, we know that it's going to be greater than or equal to zero since we're dealing with prob probabilities. And it also has this property that if we sum up all the values of that distribution function, we should get one. If we know that joint distribution function for the random variables x and y, we can get the, random, uh, the, the distribution functions for each of those random variables as a single random variable. Remember we have for x we had this function f of x which we called the distribution function. Since we're starting with a joint distribution function we'll call this one the marginal distribution function for x. Now since, it, since h is a two-dimensional function and we just want a one-dimensional function we'll sum over all the y values for each of our specific x values. So we're essentially getting rid of the y values to have that function of x. Similarly, if we want a function for y, our y random variable, we'll sum up over all the x values for each y value. This will be clear in, in the examples that we'll look at. So let's do an example where uh, we're going to uh, do an experiment where we roll two dice and we'll have two random variables from, from that uh, roll from that experiment. One of them will be this random variable x where we count the number of dice that are greater than or equal to three and the y random variable will be where the result is a the maximum number showing of the two random variable or of the two dice. Now the problem is going to ask us to find the distribution function the joint distribution function and the marginals f of x and g of y. To begin with, we'll look at the random variables x and y, and then we'll look at the joint distribution function for those two random variables. The, I have the, each roll, roll 1 and roll 2 for random variable x, and roll 1 and roll 2 for random variable y. When we roll a 1 and a 1 for x, since we're looking at the number of dice that are greater than or equal to 3, that'll be equal to zero. There's none greater than or equal to three. If we roll a one and a two, there's again zero. But if we roll a one and a three, 
there's one die that is greater than zero, greater than or equal to three, so we put a one in there. And you can see the rest of the table, what all those values are. If we roll a three and a three, there's two of them that are greater than or equal to three, so we put a two in there. Now for y, we're just looking at the maximum of the two dice. If we roll a one and a one, the maximum value is one. If we roll a one and a two, the maximum value will be a two. So you can see the, the rest of the values in the table. The range values for x are going to be 0, 1, and 2. There's only We can only have three different values for x. And for y, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or six different values. Now our joint distribution function will be different combinations, or a function of different combinations of those range values. So let's look at the, the first one, where we have h of x1 and y1. This will be equal to the probability that x will be equal to 0 and y will be equal to 1. So what that means is we, we, do, we throw our die, our two dice, and we want to know what's the probability that on that particular roll we'll have our random variable x will be equal to 0 and y will be equal to 1. So these will happen simultaneously. All right, so we have our table. So that means we need to look where do we have x equal to 0 and at the same time y equal to 1. When, y, when x is 1 and 1 we have the value 0 and also when, when our, we have that row 1 and 1 y is equal to 1. So notice that we have this, I've circled it in red, where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. That's the only place where those two happen at the same time. And therefore, out of the 36 possibilities for our role, we, our probability will be 1 36th. Now, let's look at also this other one that I've written down here, where we have x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 2. So we, we want to know where all the places are where x can be 0 and, at the same time, y be equal to 2. Now, I, I've um, boxed in blue all of those values where we have x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 2. So there's three of them. Therefore the probability for that to occur is going to be 3 36. Alright, let's look on the next page and this is the the continuation of this problem where we've got this distribution function. This joint distribution function. So where we have x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1, we've got that probability 1 36th. Now when we have x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 2, remember, remember we said that was equal to 3 36th, so I put 3 36th in the table. Now let's look at the, and one more. When x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 3, I'll go back to that table. When we look at the table where we have x is equal to 0 and y equals is y is equal to 3 there's no places where that can occur at the same time and so therefore that probability will be equal to 0 so we'll put 0 in that spot and you can see the rest of the table I've filled it all out now the joint distribution function is this center area here where we have our x and our y values that's our joint distribution function now to find the marginal distribution functions, f of x and g of y, let's look at f of x first. We want to know for this particular x value, what's the function f of x, f of 0. We get that by summing over all the y values. So these are all the y values where x is equal to 0. So we just sum up all those values and then write that sum down here, 436. So the f of 0 is equal to 4 36. To find the value for x equals 1, we sum up all these values and we get 16 36. Similarly for x equal to 2, we sum up all these and we get 16 36. Now for our distribution function for y, which we'll call g of y, we sum up over all the x values. So for this particular y value, y equal 1, 
we'll sum up all of these x values and we'll sum up the columns and so the or sum up over each column and so we get here 136 for y equals 2 we'll sum up these three values and get 336 for y equals 3 sum up these three and we get 536 and so on so this will be the distribution function for y the y random variable and this will be the distribution function for the x random variable now we know for each random variable when we have a distribution function if we sum up all of those values we should get one or if we sum up all of these values for y we should again get one all right let's look at another example in this case we've already have the joint distribution function h of x y and it's written here in the blue so we've got h of x y y can be 0 1 2 3 and x can be 0 1 2 3 we're asked to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 2 and y is equal to 1 we're also asked to find the probability of x being less than or equal to 2 and y being less than or equal to 1 and then finally the probability that x is less than 2 and y is greater than or equal to 1 All right, let's look at the first one probability that x is less than 2 less than or equal to 2 and y is equal to 1 All right, so if we look over here on the table for x less than 2 less than or equal to 2 we're including 2 1 and 0 so all of these values and y is equal to 1 so where does that occur x less than 2 and y is 1 is these values here that I have boxed in red and the, the probability of that occurring will be the sum of all those probabilities 0 1 8 and 1 quarter so I've, I've summed those up 1 8 and 1 quarter to get 3 eighths now let's look at the probability for x less than or equal to 2 and y less than or equal to 1 now I drew a quick diagram over here I've got our x values 0 1 2 3 and our y values 0 1 2 3 and I drew a line for x x less than to less than or equal to 2 so I've got a line all the way across here and then the arrow shows all the values this direction for y it's less than or equal to 1 so I drew a line here and the y values are all less than or equal to 1 would be this direction the combination of those two is the area that we need to sum up for this probability and so I drew a little hash mark here for that area now if our random variable this is essentially going all the way to minus infinity for both of these but we only have non values in these range so we're going to sum up all the values that are non zero in these in this range so looking over here it's kind of hard to see but I've got a line here and here and so and everything in this area we're going to sum up for that probability less than or equal to one and less than or equal to two and that's equal to one eighth plus one eighth plus one fourth adding those together we get four eighths or one half all right now the, the last one we're going to look at is when x is less than or equal to two and y is greater than or equal to one we have the same kind of line for x less than or equal to two we got that line here and an arrow going up but for y greater than or equal to one I drew a line here and an arrow going to the right greater than or equal to one where those overlap that's the area that we need to sum for this probability and so I drew a black line over here to show where that area is and it's going to be in this box over here so we'll sum up all of these values to get that probability so the non-zero values are 1 8 1 8 1 8 1 quarter and 1 8 summing up, up all those we get 6 8 or 3 quarters so to find any of the probabilities we look at what is the area that we're talking about in the probability and then summing up all of the probability or all of the h values that are in that area and then that'll give us that probability